Most of the database transactions we do are pretty generic CRUD actions. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete. Now, if your application becomes somewhat bigger, it's really quite tedious to have to code those basic functions into every model. Wouldn't it be nice if we could find a way to keep all that generic CRUD code in a single place and have it available everywhere? Well, we can by using a base model. Now, what we could do is just grab an existing my model from GitHub. I mean, there's dozens of them everywhere and some of them are really quite good, but we're going to be building our own my model. So you get a better idea of the concept behind it and the way you can implement it into your project and the kind of code that you would place inside of a my model. A my model or a base model is somewhat similar to a base controller. It really is just a model living in the core folder of your application directory. So let's just create one now. We'll call it my underscore model and it will be a class called my underscore model that extends CI model like so. It will have a constructor and inside of that constructor we'll run the parent constructor. You see this is almost the same as a my controller and what it does is that each time a model is loaded the my model is loaded as well. Now if we put all the generic CRUD functionality into this model and we'll extend all other models from my model then we'll have that generic CRUD functionality available everywhere. It's pretty powerful. Let's start by setting some variables. We'll have a protected variable called underscore table name and let's just duplicate that a couple of times. We'll also have a primary key and let's also create a default filter to filter the primary key with. It will have a default order. It will have a default array in which we can store the rules. And let's also add a variable that will define if we're using timestamps for this table. Now let's set some defaults. The primary key will default to ID and the filter for that ID will default to inval. Also rules would be an array and we'll set timestamps to false by default. So these are the basic variables that we're going to be using. Now let's see what methods we need. Okay, we would need a public function called get. And let's just duplicate that. We would probably need a function called save. And we would need a function called delete. And let's also do a get by. Now these should provide us with the most generic methods that we're ever going to be using while using CRUD. Now let's start with the get function. I think it would be nice if by default this function would return all records. And if you pass an ID then it would just return a single record. So let's have this method take an ID as a parameter and we'll just default that to null. Now the thing to return at the end of this method is this database get and we'll just pass the table name there. So that would be this underscore table name. And then we would either do result or we would do row. If we have an ID, then we need a single record. And if not, we need all records. Now let's just take this variable and have that there. Also, if we have an ID, let's just filter that. We'll store the primary filter into a variable and then use it to filter the ID. That's just a little bit of added security. And now we'll set a where function and we'll make sure that the primary field is set to a value of ID. Now all that's left to do is order the results. Now what we could do is just do this db order by and pass in our default order. However, if somebody already did this outside of our method, then we don't want the results ordered like this. So let's just add a conditional for that. If an order has already been set by using the DB library, then it would be stored in this array. So all we need to do is make sure that array is empty. And if it is empty, then we'll set our default order. Clean that up. Next in line is the get by method. We could pass an array holding the where statements 
And all we really need to do is set that where statement and then just call the get method that we have here. So, but what if we, for instance, were looking for a user by his email address and we would just want the function to return a single user? Well, in that case, let's just add a second parameter and let's default that to false. Now we'll need to pass that to the get function as a second parameter and we'll set the second parameter here as well. So we'll need to extend the conditional. Let's just do an else if. If single is set to true, then we want a single object. And if it's not set to true, then we want an array of objects. So that's it for our get methods. So just to recap, the get method. If we have an ID, we filter it, and we do a where statement on the ID, and we will return a single row. If we passed a single parameter, then we will return a single row as well. If we did not pass a single parameter or we pass a single parameter as false, we will get an array of rows. If the order has not already been set, we'll just set it here and then we'll return the results of our query. Now as for the getBy method, we can pass in the where statement and it will set it here and then just return the original get statement. So let's just add some data and see if it works. Let's just quickly go into our pages table and insert some records. We'll have a home page with a slug of slash. It will have an order of one and some body text. Then we'll have an about page with a slug of about and that will have an order of two. And let's just add in some text there as well. Now we'll just create a page model inside of the models directory and it will be called page underscore M. And it will be a class that extends my model and let's just copy the variables from the my model function and set them to use the right values. The table name will be pages, the primary key will be id, inval is all right. We'll just order that by order and the rules, well, we'll worry about that later and timestamps will be false because we don't have any timestamps in the table yet. And that's it, that's our model. So let's just quickly create a page controller as well. That will be a controller called page and it will extend the front end controller. Now let's add a public function called index. Inside of the constructor we will load the page model and inside of the index function we will fetch all pages. Now let's see if we can dump these to the screen. Go back to the browser and load the page controller. And as you can see, we have an array of two pages here with the home page being the first one and the about page being the second one. Let's see if we can also fetch one page. Let's just do this and go back. And there you have it, just one page. See if we can fetch the second page like that. Finally, let's see if we can get a page by its slug. And sure enough, we can. Now, as you will recall, this was set in the front-end controller, so let's just delete that. And that's it for the get functions. So it's time to turn to the save function. Let's just go back to my model, close out the rest, and scroll down to the save method here. Now, we could create separate save and insert methods, but they're so similar that I don't see the point really. So let's just stick with one single method that we'll call save, and it will take an array that we'll call data. And as a second parameter, let's pass an ID and let's default that to null. Now the idea behind this is that you'll always have data to save. And if you're passing an ID, then it will be an update. If you're not passing an ID, then it will be an insert. Okay, let's open this up and start coding. Now the first thing to do is we need to differentiate between insert and update. And as I said before, we'll do that by looking at the ID. If we don't have an ID, then it will be an insert. And if we do have an ID, then it will be an update. For an insert, we'll just call the active record method insert. Okay, just to be on the safe side, let's unset the primary key index if it was passed into the data array. So data, this primary key is null. But of course, we only need to do that if the primary key is set. So let's just assume that it's not set. And if it is set, then we'll just set it to null. Now, of course, we'll need to take this and move that back just a little bit. 
Now if we have an update, the first thing we need to do is filter the primary key. So let's set that up. Now the second thing we need to do is set the data. Then we need to set a where statement. And of course we need to add an update statement. Now remember we set the timestamps variable here. And let's take that into account as well. First of all, let's see if we have to set timestamps. If this timestamps equals true, then we'll create a variable called now and we'll set that to a MySQL date timestamp. Now let's assume we have an ID and if we don't, let's just add a create date. And of course we need a modified key with every update or insert. Now the final thing we want to do is return the ID of the record that we saved. So let's add that. Return the ID. Now if it was an update, we already have an ID. But if it was an insert, we don't have an ID. So let's just fetch that. If it's an insert, fetch the ID. And that's it, that's our save method. Let's see if it works. Once again, we'll open up the page controller and we'll create a public function called save. Now we'll set a data array and that will take a title, a slug, an order and a body. We'll take that data array and pass it to the function save. And then we'll store the result of that function in a variable called ID and we'll just dump that ID to the screen. So let's set some values here. Title will be my page. The slug will be my page. The order will be two and the body will be this is my body. Let's just save that. Go back to the browser and load page slash save. Whoops, and as you can see, I made a tiny error there. Okay, let's have a look at line number 53. Oh yeah, that was just plain stupid. This should be setting the data and inserting to the table, like so. Let's try and reload that page. And sure enough, the ID of a new page is being dumped to the screen. Let's just check that in PHP My Admin pages. And as you can see, we have the my page added here. Now its order is set to two, so let's change that. Take out all variables except the order and update record number three by passing three as the second parameter. Set the order to three. Let's just go back to the page, save it one more time. And there's another error there at line number 60. Let's have a look there. We're filtering a data with a key of primary key. Okay, so we are assuming we have this key here, but it doesn't exist. We'll just need to filter the ID itself like that, and that should be good. So let's reload the page, and sure enough, there's the ID again. Now let's see if it's been updated, and sure enough, the order has been changed to three. Now the last method to code in my model is the delete method. It will take a single parameter called ID. Let's just set up our filter again. Copy this and paste it in here. And let's filter that ID that we just passed. Now one thing that I really like to add for security is a conditional here that says if we do not have an ID, then we just will not delete anything and return false. And if we do have an ID, then we'll need to set a where statement where the primary key equals the ID. And let's just set the limits to one. And finally, we'll call the delete statement. And we need to pass the table name. So that's it for the delete function. Let's try it out. Go back to our page controller and add a delete function here. What we want to do is delete the page we just created and then we just won't dump anything. So let's go back to the browser and load the delete page. We see an empty screen. Well, that was to be expected. Let's just check the database and sure enough, there is no more page with an ID of three. Well, that's it for my model. We are ready to code an awesome CMS. And in the next lesson, we'll be styling the admin panel using Twitter Bootstrap. See you then.